Drones, or unmanned aerial vehicles, have rapidly evolved from niche gadgets to workable tools in various industries, including agriculture, infrastructure inspection, and emergency response. They aren't yet superior tools for things like aerial application and other aspects of agriculture, for example, but pioneering companies are trying to make them work. The main safety firewall so far has been that drones cannot operate out of sight of their operators. Having drones fly blindly through the air has been seen as a hazard by the FAA and most people in the aviation industry. But that is changing quickly. Large corporations like Amazon have been pressuring Congress and Congress has been pressuring the FAA to allow beyond visual line of sight drone operations. That first resulted in a disastrous Aviation Rulemaking Committee or ARC report in 2022. Our committees are formed to provide recommendations to the FAA on various aviation-related regulations, policies, and standards. ARCs often include representatives from the aviation industry, government agencies, and other stakeholders who are supposed to work together to develop and evaluate proposed rules and policies that affect the aviation community. What made that ARC report a disaster is that it ultimately represented only the interests of corporations wanting to field beyond visual line of sight drones. The leadership of the ARC was headed up by drone interests, and my understanding from insiders on the committee is that corporate interests hijacked the process, ignored a lot of aviation common sense, and ramrodded rules that their industry bosses wanted. The pilot organizations that were represented on the ARC had major concerns about the report. Those concerns were largely ignored by the corporate interests in leadership positions. That means that pilot organizations had to submit their displeasure with the report as responses to the official report. Almost every flying organization at the time, including the United States Ultralight Association and the Light Aircraft Manufacturers Association, submitted comments to the flawed report. The main problem that drone interests have with current regulations is with accountability. Right now, each pilot is personally responsible to see and avoid other traffic. Corporations are trying to rewrite regulations so that they don't have that kind of accountability. It helps to understand what beyond visual line of sight technology is. Beyond visual line of sight operations enable drones to be controlled remotely, often through advanced technologies such as satellite communication, cellular networks, and other long range data links. These technologies allow drones to fly beyond the visual range of the operator, providing the ability to cover vast areas without the need for constant human oversight. The drones could be equipped with sophisticated sensors, cameras, and sometimes even artificial intelligence to navigate and respond to their environment. I don't believe that anyone argues that the potential applications for drones are immense. For instance, they can be used to inspect power lines, pipelines, and railroads in remote areas, monitor large-scale agricultural operations, deliver medical supplies to hard-to-reach locations, and assist in search and rescue operations. I don't think that they could do a lot of those jobs better than manned aircraft, but there is room for both kinds of aviation. For example, drones could play a significant role in environmental monitoring and disaster management, offering real-time data and images from areas that are difficult or dangerous for humans to access. But there are risks. Despite their potential benefits, beyond visual line-of-sight operations introduce several risks that need careful consideration. One of the primary concerns is the risk to low-flying aircraft such as ultralights, aerial applicators, hot air balloons, light sport aircraft, and even other drones. These manned aircraft often operate in the same airspace they're proposing for drone operations. Without the ability for drones to see other aircraft, the risk of mid-air collisions increases significantly. Another concern is the potential impact on wildlife. Most drones are blind to birds and can disrupt natural habitats and behaviors, particularly in sensitive areas like nesting sites or migratory paths. Noise pollution and the physical presence of drones can cause stress and behavioral changes to wildlife. Additionally, there are security and privacy risks associated with drone operations. Drones flying beyond the line of sight could be used for unauthorized surveillance or to bypass security measures in sensitive areas. To address these risks, the FAA is scheduled to publish a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking soon. That NPRM is specifically addressing beyond visual line of sight operations. These proposed regulations are likely to include requirements for collision avoidance systems, reliable communication links, and pilot training. 
Internationally, organizations like the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, are also working on harmonizing beyond visual line of sight regulations across member states. The goal is to create a safe and efficient airspace environment that integrates manned and unmanned aircraft. The challenge, as I see it, is a requirement for detect and avoid systems. Drone operators generally don't want the responsibility for avoiding manned aircraft. In fact, one of the proposals in the poorly written ARC report was that the FAA should mandate that everyone flying below 500 feet AGL to have ADS-B out or similar technology. Of course, aircraft owners and pilots would be responsible for buying, maintaining, and paying for inspections for the equipment. Safety really is the issue here, but drone operators aren't nearly as concerned about safety as pilots are. I remember that the authors of the ARC report spent considerable time talking about safety, but unfortunately, a lot of the words were focused on safety compromises for the, quote, greater good, which seemed to me to be a little self-serving. It's a bold premise to say that a commercial enterprise is worth a few lives, especially the lives of people who are not volunteering to be part of said commercial enterprise. The ARC report has a section titled, Acceptable Level of Risk. That section seems uniquely devoted to arguments for lowering the standards for safety and mid-air collisions that have traditionally kept U.S. airspace safe. Trying to explain away mid-air collisions between humans and robots as something the public would get used to is chilling from the point of view of a human pilot. If one were cynical, and I am, one might come to the conclusion that the report has more to do with money and profit for drone manufacturers and operators than it has to do with safety. For years now, there have been reports from drone developers that sensing and artificial intelligence systems exist that provide drones with sense and avoid capabilities superior to the human eye. If the technology already exists, the requirement should be to equip drones with systems that could sense and avoid other aircraft and wildlife. If the current cost is prohibitive or the technology untrustworthy, then perhaps drones aren't quite ready for prime time. Another alarming thing to come out of the ARC report was the definite impression that some members of the drone industry are trying to avoid liability for the incidents that they could be causing. Human pilots have literal skin in the game. Drone operators do not. Based on years of evidence, it could be shown that human pilots work hard to see and avoid other aircraft because a mid-air collision is usually deadly to the pilot. Drone operators will never have that level of personal life or death interest in preventing an accident. To then put the blame on a human pilot for a mid-air collision that could be caused by a drone crashing into a crewed aircraft from behind is appalling. As of the publication of this video, the Beyond Visual Line of Sight NPRM hasn't been published yet. Hopefully when it is, the proposed rules will mandate redundant AI systems aboard drones that will detect and avoid objects with or without ADS-B out. There should also be a quick land feature that activates immediately if or when the AI fails. Otherwise, the FAA and drone operators are inviting mid-airs on a routine basis. Not only will that be a horrendous outcome for the human pilots and passengers involved, but it will also be a black eye on the drone industry and the FAA itself. If you're interested in powered parachute flight instruction in either the Midwest or in Florida, please visit the link in the description to easyflight.com. And please remember to like and subscribe if you're interested in powered parachutes and content like this. Thanks so much for watching and blue skies.